Hi friends, welcome back. I'm Elaine and I'm living with autoimmune disease and today I am answering all your questions. So if you left me a question here on YouTube, if you left me a question on Instagram, or if you privately messaged me, stay tuned. Be all questions answered in today's video. But before we jump into answering your questions, I want to remind you I am just a patient. So I'm answering your questions. Some are medical and it's only my experience. Remember to talk to your doctor about your own personal journey. These are just my experiences. No medical advice is being given here. Let's jump into the questions. You all ready? Let's go. Dave is going to help us today. He's going to be our moderator and ask us the questions. What was your ANA titer when you were first diagnosed? My ANA titer when I was first diagnosed with scleroderma was 640. So the way the titer reads is one colon and then a number. Mine is 640. Please remember, scleroderma is not a diagnosis on blood work alone. It is a clinical diagnosis. Next question. I've been prescribed 10 milligrams methotrexate for skin tightening with scleroderma. What was your experience with this medication? Were you okay with occasionally having a glass of wine or did you give up alcohol entirely? Good question. I have made a whole video about my methotrexate journey, so I will link that down below for you. Uh, my experience with methotrexate is included in that video. I didn't have any problems with methotrexate. I had some side effects in the beginning, but they all kind of worked out. So I'll leave you that video down below. Watch that. As far as alcohol goes, I did give up drinking alcohol completely, mainly because when I drink alcohol, I flare and I do not feel well the morning after or after drinking alcohol. So I gave it up because it's not worth hurting over a glass of wine. How do you manage time and energy for friendships when you run out of energy for the day? Do your friends understand when you have to say no? And thank you for your honesty in the videos. Awesome. Um, I'm glad that my videos help you. How do I manage friendships? Well, it, sometimes it gets difficult because as we all know, we run off spoons very quickly. And so we have to manage our energy where we can. I do work full time. So a lot of my energy goes towards working. So I'm trying to manage my time effectively. Most of my friends understand my situation. I am blessed to have great friends who understand that I run out of energy. However, the best way that I find to have friendships is text messaging, messaging, because I can do that when I don't feel well, when I'm laying on the couch, when I'm having a bad day, I can text my friends, message them, and ask them what's up and have a relationship with people without actually having to go out and use more spoons or meet them physically and use more spoons. So to me, that's actually an asset that I use. And that's how I manage friendships. It's not always easy, um, but when I do have energy, I do try to meet my friends if it's for dinner or just for coffee or something like that. It was Wednesday. Does having a pet bring comfort and calmness to your RA journey? My dogs have provided me so much love and comfort on my journey. Wednesday, I'm so glad you asked about her. She's doing great. She's settling in. It's been about five months now, and I think that she has really found her home here, and we love that she's here. If you have not caught on, uh, we have a series going here on my YouTube channel, Wednesdays with Wednesdays, and you will find Wednesday shorts on Wednesday on this channel because I'm a proud cat mom and I'm not afraid to admit it. And I do find that it's nice to have a pet, uh, especially on those days I don't feel good. I mean, it's just kind of a stress relief to have somebody with you. Yes, uh, she's doing great. She's definitely settled in and we are so happy to have her here. And hopefully you all aren't getting bored of my shorts of Wednesday. How often do you have flare-ups? Ah, good question. If you haven't seen my video about flares, I'll link that down below. Uh, it kind of explain what a flare is, at least for me. How often do I flare up is a good question because I flare up more when I have emotional stress or physical stress, and that really does cause me to flare. So that is a thing. So if work has been particularly stressful at a certain period of time, I will start to flare, and flares for me are 
uh, fatigue and pain and swelling and that kind of thing. So I would say that I at least have a flare probably mm, at least once every three to four months. I, that's that's pretty usual for me. And how long the flare lasts, it can last anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks and sometimes a month. And I work with my rheumatologist in order to figure out what we can do to minimize that flare. How do you maintain your health? How do I maintain my health? Good question. Uh, well, I do see multiple specialists for my autoimmune disease. I, my rheumatologist is mainly the quarterback of the team and he oversees all the other specialists and care. And I follow the directions of my doctors. I, I take my prescribed medication as prescribed. I am up on my rituxan infusions and make sure that I don't fall off a schedule with those. Um, try to get the insurance authorization before I know it's going to run out so that I'm not in a predicament where I'm without medication. But mainly, I have a lot of specialists and I'm on a lot of medication. I do take time for myself in the mornings. I do meditate and for me, meditation is prayer and that kind of thing. It's a faith-based meditation and I do do that in the morning to kind of level myself out for the day. I do try to continue to do some physical exercise, especially when I have the energy to do that. For me, that's walking. I am blessed to live in a walkable neighborhood and a walkable place. So we walk a lot of places. And even when it really hurts, I continue to do it because I find that I have less pain after walking or being physical than if I stay on the couch or immobile. I tend to have more pain following that. So that's kind of how I maintain my health. Are you still trying to get off prednisone? How's that going? Ah, the million dollar question and I need to give you all an update on prednisone. I, I was trying to get off prednisone. I know that I published a video about withdrawal pain. If you haven't seen that, I'll link that down below too. And I was really working on getting off prednisone. Unfortunately, my prednisone journey of trying to come off of it has stalled out. And I had to increase my dose of prednisone and go back up on it. And the reason why is because I had adrenal insufficiency. I have been on prednisone for a very long time and I was waiting for my adrenal glands to kick back in while I was decreasing prednisone. Now, uh, if you know anything about prednisone, you have to be very careful about it because you could go into adrenal crisis. I was being overseen by my rheumatologist to come off of prednisone, uh, but my adrenal glands didn't kick back in like I needed them to. And so I needed to come back up on prednisone and I feel a lot better now uh, than I was feeling. That doesn't mean my journey of coming off prednisone is not going to continue. I think I'm gonna go through the summer months. I definitely have a harder time during the summer. Uh, I have dysautonomia and that flares up with the heat and just summertime is not great for me. So I'm gonna work on taking my prednisone through the summer months and then maybe trying to decrease it a little bit slower uh, after the summer. If you guys want more of a video and an update about what happened with prednisone and my adrenal insufficiency, let me know and I'll film a video about that. While you take microphenolate, do you also do the rituximab infusion at the same time? Hmm, good question. Yes, I take microphenolate and do rituxan at the same time. I always have. I've been on microphenolate since my diagnosis with scleroderma in 2016, and I have done microphenolate with Actemra, and I have done microphenolate with rituxan. It's my cocktail, so I do take Celset um, and rituxan together. If you have a headache, how do you manage it? Oh yeah, headaches. That's definitely a problem for me. I do have occipital neuralgia. I think that's how you say it. Please don't hold me to that. Obviously, I'm just a patient. But I do have occipital neuralgia, which causes headaches or migraines. And I've gotten nerve blocks um, for those before. 
the nerve block works. However, the insurance company now no longer wants to pay for the nerve blocks and they're pretty expensive. So I get trigger point injections in my neck, upper back, and around the occipital nodes. I actually documented that in my last video where I took you to the rheumatologist with me. So I'll link that down below, but I do get trigger point injections about every six weeks and that seems to help my headaches a bit. I do take Tylenol for them and then sometimes I just have to go lay down and close my eyes and pray it goes away, but I do deal with headaches a lot and the trigger point injections are helping for those. You have brain fog where it's hard to concentrate? Yes, I do have brain fog and I do find it hard to concentrate sometimes. When I am flaring, I tend to have an incredible amount of brain fog. I'm just patient with myself and the people around me are patient with me when I forget words or when I'm trying to describe the word I'm trying to think of. But yes, I do have brain fog and I do find it hard to concentrate. I think that's just a part of autoimmune disease. I wish I had some quick fix for you, but I don't. I, It's just something that everybody around me knows that I deal with and we just kind of laugh when I forget words. How long have you had scleroderma and do you have Raynaud's? Good question. I first turned SCL70 positive in 2016. I was diagnosed shortly after that with scleroderma. And like I said before, scleroderma is obviously not a blood diagnosis, it's a clinical diagnosis. So I had to go through the whole nail capillary thing and all of that before I got my official diagnosis. But I was diagnosed 2016. And if you wanna know more about my scleroderma story, I'll link that down below too for you. Um, I've done a video about my whole journey with scleroderma, so I'll leave that. And Raynaud's. Yes, I do have Raynaud's. Uh, my, actually, one of my very first symptoms of scleroderma was being in the freezer section at the grocery store and my lips turned blue. And my husband, asked me what was going on with my lips and I had no idea they were turning blue. Uh, so yes, I do have Raynaud's and I have Raynaud's that affects my hands, my feet, uh, my lips. I think that's a big part of scleroderma and that was definitely one of the symptoms I think that clued off my rheumatologist that we needed to do additional testing. I've done a Raynaud's video too, so I'll link that down below. I feel like I'm linking a whole lot, but in case you're wanting to know more about that too, I'll link that down below. What do you do for pain if and when you have it? What do I do for pain if and when I have it? Well, unfortunately, pain is a huge part of my life. Uh, I feel like there is not really a moment anymore in my journey where I'm not really in pain. I always have some subset of pain that I'm living with every day and it can be minor a one or a two, or it could be major, eight or a nine. What do I do for pain? Well, I do take prednisone and that does help my pain. It's not obviously a pain medication, but because it decreases the inflammation, it does help me. I also do have a prescription for pain medication. I do have a prescription for tramadol and I do take that when it's needed. I don't take pain medicine every day, but I do take it when it's needed. As far as other things I do, I do rest when I need to. There are sometimes I have a whole lot of ideas in my head that I want to get done and then I wake up and it's just a bad pain day on the weekend and I can't get any of the errands or things that I want to get done. So I have to rest. I try to listen to my body and rest when I need to rest. Are things getting better in terms of treatments? Ah, good question. Actually, I am about to start a new treatment and uh, I am going to start SCIG. You all may have heard of IVIG, which is an immunoglobulin therapy. I am not really up on this therapy yet, so I don't want to do a whole video about it yet. Um, I do have friends on Instagram that have used it and I have one friend in particular who has kind of like helped me uh, understand more about it in her journey. So I'm going to start SCIG, which is actually something I will do at home weekly and hook myself up and use the pump. And my immunologist prefers to use SCIG instead of IVIG because she thinks that the level will stay more consistent for me instead of getting it monthly via infusion. 
So we're going to try that first. But like I said, I don't know a whole lot about it yet. So I don't want to do a whole video and tell you all about it because I'm still learning myself. But as soon as I figure it out and get it under my belt, I'll share my journey with SCIG with you. But also I'm super excited for CAR T cell therapy. Have you all seen the research that is coming out about this, these CAR T cells? It's super exciting. They're using it for lupus. It looks really promising for autoimmune disease. It's the part of the immune system they think that might be dysfunctional for us. And they are figuring out a way to kind of correct the situation to help us, to stabilize us. It seems safer than stem cell transplant, which is what some people have had to do in the past, um, especially those with scleroderma that are progressing rapidly. But the CAR T cells thing, whatever it is, seems much safer than stem cell. And I actually asked my rheumatologist about it to see what he thought. And he said they're using it for lupus and it looks really promising. So that's really exciting. And that seems to be on the horizon for us. And so I think between IVIG and the new CAR T cells, I think that maybe we're kind of figuring out autoimmune disease. That's super exciting. All right, I think we've answered all the questions. Thank you everybody for the questions. They are great questions that you asked and hopefully this has been beneficial to everybody. I really appreciate you being here and uh, thanks for being my friend. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you relate to any of these answers, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know I'm not alone. If you haven't yet subscribed and you'd like to come along on my adventure, I'd love to have you. The more friends, the more better. My adventure is sometimes fun. It's sometimes medical, but it is always an adventure. And so hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. There's no cost. And if you have any additional questions, leave me a comment down below and I will answer it to the best of my abilities. But remember, I am only a patient. I am not a doctor and I have no medical training whatsoever besides just being a patient. I had a lot of fun answering y'all's questions. So thank you again for leaving them. And until my next adventure, go have yours.